G'day ladies and gentlemen, over the past 12 months, I have put together some of the best, well, it depends how you look at it, some of the best or the worst content when it comes to fat acceptance, body positivity, and all of the movements surrounding those individuals. And that's what this video is. Uh, this is a compilation of the best, of the worst, of the largest, and in chargest. And ladies and gentlemen, I hope you very much enjoyed. And if you do, and you want to support this channel, check out my book, Better Man. This is for every single bloke, dude, male in existence. This book I'm very, very proud of, and I think you will enjoy it as well. There are so many issues facing young men across the world today, and I hope Hope that maybe a few of those issues can be addressed by better man. So check it out at isaacbutterfield.com, the link is down below. And if you enjoy this channel, if you enjoy what I do, then I think you'll enjoy this as well. This is for every single man, but you know what? Women can benefit from it as well. So go and check it out. Yeah. Ooh, you're not concerned for my health. You're just fat phobic. It's unfair to just comment on some random lady's body. You know, you don't need to do that. But when you put stuff up all the time that promotes how healthy you are, it is a bit ridiculous to think that no one's going to comment on it. And just because they do comment on it and say, hey, that's not that healthy, it doesn't make them fat phobic. It just means that they are, ready for a word? Being accurate. I've never let my stomach be the reason I don't wear the dress again. Let me just say this, if my stomach looked like that in a t-shirt, I wouldn't fucking wear it. Worrying about your body. This is your vessel, it's your house, it's where- Mate, there's nothing wrong with you personally. Don't try and make other people say to you that that looks good, when we all know it doesn't. Where you live, you don't, okay. there's no point in judging it. You're not Absolutely pregnant, so you no shouldn't point. be- But it's very hard. I don't fucking know. It's a hard one. Like, you don't want to be a piece of shit to these people, but also, fucking, what are you talking about? I will never let my stomach be the reason I don't wear the damn dress. Well, do. Do let that be the reason. Because that's what dictates why we wear certain things. Listen, I don't know if you know this, I've got childbearing hips, all right? And some clothes look fucking stupid on me. Ridiculous. And I wouldn't wear that. Why? Because people would look at me and go, fuck, you shouldn't wear that, you fucking childbearing hip having piece of shit. Right? Fuck it. Cost. POV. Point of view. If you didn't know that. I know that from porn. That's a shame. I finally love my body. I've never felt so loved. That's great. Okay, a dude does that. What do you say? Lose some weight, fatty. That's what you'd say if it was a dude. That's what you'd say. Would you say it looks good if it was a dude? No, you fucking wouldn't. You'll gain weight. You'll lose weight. You'll sometimes hate your body more than anything. <clears throat> but your worth is still the same. I disagree. Some people get very, 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 very large. And I don't think they're worth the same as everybody else. POV, the princess hates her waist, even when she's already skinny. Okay. Yeah, like, if you look at the actual princesses, yeah, they have very skinny waists. Okay. Why, you, you're an adult, why are you trying to look like a Disney princess? Fucking grow up. We argued that the only reason people admire bodybuilders uh, who have built their body with muscle and not um, obese people who have built their body with eating huge amounts of food is because there's uh, prejudice against fat people. And so bodybuilding could benefit from including the non-competitive um, display of fat bodies alongside muscular ones. I saw this the other day and people were freaking out in the comment section, but I know who this is. This is Helen Pluckrose, yeah. Helen Pluckrose was one of the contributors who exposed serious issues with peer review process in what is known as the Grievance Studies Affair. I actually had uh, one of the dudes who was involved in that, Peter Bogorzy, on my podcast the other week. And basically what they did is they had these ridiculous studies made and submitted them to uh, peer review in scientific journals and a lot of them got through. My favourite was about inspecting dog genitals at dog parks. Please do not clip that. Let me explain. Okay, here it is. Human reactions to rape culture and queer performativity in urban dog parks in Portland, Oregon. It was a hoax paper, but it actually got through, which is absolutely insane. Wilson writes, dog parks are petri dishes for canine rape culture, noting that she witnessed a dog rape every 60 minutes. <laughs> so I guess the important thing to remember here is take 
a lot of peer-reviewed journals and some scientific papers with a grain of salt. Some people may call me Delulu, but I actually love may... my fat body. What? One of the first things that Jesus helped me with... Jesus Christ. Some may... Hang on, go back. Some, some people, people may, may, call, me may Delulu, call you Delulu. I actually love my... All right, some people may. One of the first things that helped me with my confidence was following other plus-size creators. And I've yes, because that will put you into an echo chamber where you only hear what you want to hear. You'll then never change, you'll then remain exactly the same person you are right now, and you'll never better yourself. Good first steps. And I've learned to love all my parts because at the end of the day, we are just humans in a meat skin. I also really like to just uh, yeah, look uh, at myself well, in the I mirror right. and tell myself I am the most beautiful human being ever. My little young self deserves it, and I know she'd be very proud. Did she say of me. ham and beans? So baby girl, you just do. I'm you. sure she said and ham and beans. Marks, all those. Oh, she's, dro she's dropping her guts. Oh, no. You're not sexy. You're fucking gross. Makes the floor squeak. You Did you put that on yourself? And I bet if I look up chubby red 444 Okay, here she is on TikTok, which is just the place all this lives. I'm fat, but big deal. I don't feel bad about it. Wow. All right. Find me on Instagram. I'm getting to something here. We'll search her Instagram. Here it is. Click me. I confirm. There we go. Only fans. Big red. Big old, you're, you're fat Aussie nympho. Fuck yeah. Unlock to see all of my big body. $7 for 31 days. Not worth it. Having a baby is something that I've always dreamed of doing. Oh yeah, I made a video on this guy the other week. Because I'm That just looks like a fat a dude. Woman. When I began transitioning 10 years ago. In that video, I made it very, very, very clear that men can't have babies. This is what this guy's saying. You hear, here, I'm calling him a guy because he looks like a guy. And that's the nice thing to do. That's the polite way to act. But you're not a man, biologically. You are, I'll call you one, but you're a trans man. Just don't say that men can have babies. Just throw trans at the start there and then no one's got a problem. Transitioning 10 years ago, doctors told me that... Who the fuck has a baby at home in a water bath? You should be ashamed of yourself. Transitioning and testosterone were likely to make my body infertile and there was no way I would get pregnant while on testosterone. So I spent... Okay, I guess they're not fat, they're just pregnant. Same thing. They don't make mannequins that look like plus size bodies. They don't make mannequins that look like plus size bodies, or at least not plus size bodies that look like mine. So I decided to make my own. With Taylor Swift coming next year with her Eros tour, I really wanted to make some replica Taylor Swift outfits. And me and my girlfriend love to sew, but we thought we'd better step our game up and actually make a plus size Yeah, there's nothing wrong with, me. you know, so making clothes that fit you. A little better and it's just easier for our sewing process. This is a really vulnerable experience. It looks fucking it vulnerable, mate. <laughs> Jesus. As confronting as it was, because mannequins just don't look like my body. They don't look like my body. I got a big fucking weird long body with wide hips. They don't look Strange. like a lot of people's bodies. So if you want to stay tuned and see a fat girl make a Taylor Swift out. Yeah, I shan't be doing that. You know what's important though? I think we need to go back and have a bit of a look at how we used to treat obese people. Before TikTok and before we were all trying to be nice and, and save the fucking whales, so to speak. This I came across which I thought was very very funny. Overweight people tend to be dishonest, inconsistent and irresponsible. How often have we said or heard people say, I don't know why I can't lose weight, I hardly eat a thing. All kinds of alibis and excuses. Our sessions together tend to debunk these excuses and instead focus on behavioral consistency, control and commitment. I'm gonna go on the quick weight loss diet and you know that's where you eat meat and water. That's what I'll do all week. You would lose a lot. That's the carnival diet. You would lose a lot, a lot of weight. Yeah, losing weight's work. I mean, it's not easy. And this is why I think a lot of people shy away from trying to lose weight, because it is hard work. You have to stick to it for a long time. Don't eat and get exercise. I mean, it just doesn't, oh, I want to lose weight. It just won't come off that way. And that's what we're seeing now. People just accepting. Accepting this idea in their head that's stuck in their head because of echo chambers on TikTok and places like it, that they're just stuck this way. They can never change. It's not true. We had a turkey dinner for our family. Yeah, fat bitch. And I just forgot that whole day that I was on a diet. I just put it right out of my you mind. Can't and do that. I know. And that's fine. You can have days off. Don't worry about it. Because what we're doing is, is an occupation, not just a home. It is. This is a whole way of life that we're building yeah. for ourselves. 
The reason you change your way of life is because the way of life that you're currently in is obviously not working and it's not working to make your life better or make yourself healthier. You need to find a way to live a healthier life and in, by doing that, you'll lose weight, you'll look better and you'll live longer. I don't understand how this is a hard concept to take on board. At times I've felt like, well, why do I have to lose weight? You know, people, people look at me, but... You don't have to. This is the big theme of this video. You don't have to lose weight, but just don't tell other people how they should think about you. If you want to be a big fat fuck, go nuts, all right? Eat them all. But people are going to look at you and go, that's a shame. And they're going to look at you when you say fucking, oh, my, my stretch marks are hot and gorgeous and why don't, you, why don't you hang out in one of them? They're going to look at you and go, no, no thank you. I prefer people that look good. It doesn't really bother them, so why should it bother me? That's I have to have a motivation. This is part of our commitment action approach to weight control. Mm -hmm. The girls meet weekly in therapy sessions where behavioral change is emphasized. That, uh... Well, ladies and gents, there you have it. We've gotten to the bottom of, well, not really. We haven't really, <laughs> we haven't really discussed anything. We've just looked at some things and gone, fuck, that's fucking ridiculous. Can we just normalize saying she looks good instead of she looks wow. good for a big girl? I don't know what's going on here. This is fat, trans, and valid. Ooh. Instead of she looks good for a big girl. Ah! How about we do that? Why are you doing this? Respectfully, of course. There's nothing wrong with you. Of course, you're valid, right? Being trans, being fat, none of that makes you not valid. Just stop shaking your ass at me through the camera. All right, next video. Jesus Christ. Props on my fingers like he wanna wife me. Got another shorty shit, ain't nothing like me. Yeah, about to catch another fight. I'm about to make him wanna fight. I have a whole video about her. Go and watch it. It's great. That is, what's the name? Big Al Woozy. Woozy by name, Woozy by nature. Okay, hang on. I'll, I'll, if you didn't see the video I'm talking about, I'll show you who, who I'm talking about. <laughs> what is she making? Some people should not have confidence at all. Don't want to see a confident, beautiful, fat woman in a bikini? Keep scrolling. Well, I want to see it now. Okay, now that they're gone, this is the bikini. It's like you got bread rolls. You got two sets of tits. I feel hot as fuck. Like, un. Why do you feel hot as fuck? Looks like me in the bikini. Like, come on, you know that doesn't look good. You know that doesn't look good. There's nothing wrong with my body. <laughs> she steadily gave me a seizure. That is not a dirty word. Okay, I know this is horrible. I know I'm being an asshole here. Those are some fucking good stretch marks. I'll tell you that much right now, ladies and gentlemen. There's some, uh, there's some decent stretch marks right there. I, it looks like a fucking roadmap. I, 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 it looks like a giant scrotum. All I'm saying, and I know I'm being a dick here. I know I'm being an absolute dick. But if you're going to post this on TikTok, it's got millions of views. It's got 53,000 likes. People are going to look at it and go, hey, come on, mate. What are you doing? And my issue with it is not so much that this person exists. They have every right to exist and they should be respected. But it's the video. It's the music in the background, the whole thing, there's nothing wrong with my body, etc, etc. You are giving people permission to continue to live their way of life, which is fine, but it's an unhealthy way of life. It's a way of life that will lead to an early death, and that's not a good thing. We should be inspiring people to become better versions of themselves, not just to give up and just be who they are, because who they are is going to kill them. I'm fat. I'm a fat person. But I'm really quite a healthy fat. I'm not a fit fat person, and I would like to be fitter, but I am not unhealthy. I do not have big bones. I do not have a glandular issue. Uh, I'm fat because I eat enormously. And I love cake. It's brilliant. I like her attitude, and I also dislike it. What she said at the start about being a healthy fat person, you can be quite healthy, but you can always be healthier. And I don't know. I feel, and, and maybe you disagree with this, I feel what I want from life is to be the best version of myself. And I think that's why when I look at people and I go, oh, you could try harder, you could do better. I feel like that worms its way into all the other facets of your life, whether it's business or whether it's your relationship, whatever. You start to become a better person in all of those areas by working on 
difficult things like your health, like your fitness, all of these different types of things. So I'm glad that she said that she's not fat because she's got a glandular problem or she's big bone. She understands why she's fat. She eats too much food, but also you're saying you're quite healthy. So who knows how healthy she actually is? It remains to be seen. But once again, people see this and then they give up on trying to become a better version of themselves. And that's why I have an issue with it. This video is for Ooh. the Andrew Tate wannabe Ian Miles Chung. Ooh. So if you're not him, I've seen him on I Twitter. don't know, man. Today, Ian posted a tweet featuring a fat woman using my song, Diet Culture. Ian Your song, Diet Culture. So Ian Miles Chung said, remember when they said fat acceptance was just about accepting people who they are? Yeah, well, that was a mistake. People are destroying their lives. Okay. So who is this, who is this lady? Diet culture. Let's have a look at the lyrics. Okay, the song is diet culture. Let's go to the chorus. There's nothing wrong with my body. Fat is not a dirty word. If my body tells me something, I'll make sure it's hurt. If my body is a vessel, I'll give it what it needs. I will not betray my body, no matter what you think of me. This is basically pandering to fatties. That's all you're doing there, love. Congratulations. You've done so well. Oh, guess what time it is? It's time for some cute outfits and fat rhetoric. You okay. can wear pretty dresses and have jiggly underarm fat. You can, but everyone's going to go, geez, that's some jiggly underarm fat. Sometimes your mom is wrong. No, she's not. My mom's never wrong. A moment for the buttons. Whoa, a moment for the buttons. Yes, a round of applause for them holding on for dear life. Not all bodies are capable of being healthy. Okay, sure. But all bodies are capable of being healthier. And the problem with saying things like that is, yeah, some people are going to struggle to be healthier than others, but being healthy is subjective, right? I can probably do things that other people can't, and other people can do things that I probably can't. But we can all work to be better versions of ourselves, and I imagine that this lady is not pushing that message. If you just look at her, okay, if you look at her bio, content creator, full-time fat, Jesus Christ. Fat doesn't look good on anyone. Okay. Were you trying to make a point here? Like, listen, I know what you're trying to do, and I know you're trying to make people feel included and shit, but you can't. That doesn't look good. It doesn't. If I dress like that when I was at my fattest, it would not look good. It doesn't look good on you. Stop it. Let's talk about dating preferences. This video was this so good. good, you must watch it, and I want to branch off and talk about how it relates to fat phobia and dating. Ooh, A lot good. of times when people are asked, why don't you date fat people, trans people, people of color? They will why are fat people, trans people, and people of color in a group here? Why? Why? In why? <laughs> why are they grouped together? People say, it's just a preference. I'm just not attracted to them. I can't make myself be attracted to someone I'm just not attracted to. Is that not accurate? That's a completely accurate thing of saying, I'm just not attracted to these type of people or those type of people. That's fine, isn't it? The implication here being that preferences are innate, unchanging, and completely independent of any outside factors. Or no, I think some people have preferences that change over time, and maybe some people have preferences that have been uh, skewed a certain way because of their upbringing, but that doesn't rule out preferences altogether, you fucking lunatic. Or societal norms and therefore that they are inherently unproblematic. Like, it's not fat phobia, it's just who I am. I can't help this it. This is the whole underlying message here. They want people to find them attractive no matter what. And have you noticed it's only chicks doing this, it's never dudes. I don't just, in these videos I make, I don't just leave dudes out. They don't make these videos. Basically the argument is, you have to find it's attractive, and if you don't, you're a bad person. I don't know, I just, I don't understand why everyone's trying to convince us that, you, that fat people are attractive. Next. Three years of being loved and adored by this wonderful man. Did you see what he did? Look. What the fuck was that? That's not body positive. He's jiggling your tummy. He's got a fat fetish. He did it again. What? How are you okay with that? Listen. After my wife and I had our son, the old butt's mum put on a bit of weight. If my wife walked up and grabbed me by the old love handle and said, Ah, oh, g'day, big fella, how you going? I would be so upset. How are you okay with this? Oh, my.
my god. He just walks up, gives her a fucking squeeze, and gets moving. <laughs> Buying a reinforced toilet seat. This dude's a fuck. He loves it. If you go, I'll stay. Stop rubbing a belly. <laughs> Stop it. That's weird. That's so weird. That's like grabbing a dude by his dick. I think, in this situation, because it's obviously a sexual thing. Or grabbing a tit. It's the same thing. Stop grabbing a belly. It's weird. And stop filming it, please. I bet they do fucking OnlyFans or something, don't they? <laughs> I fucking knew it. I knew you did OnlyFans. Here I was thinking you maybe you didn't do OnlyFans, but I knew you did. I knew it was sexual, you dirty devils. Your pretty plump girl next door finally has OnlyFans. Size 22 with lots of belly and ass to keep you satisfied. You'll love every inch of this soft belly and pale pink skin. Explore every dimple and curve like never before. Come with us to celebrate fat victories with Tigress Osborne and Aubrey Gordon. Fat victories? The event was held at DCTVNY in Lower Manhattan. We were so excited when we got there because they had these sample chairs so that everyone could pick the seating that's most comfortable for them. The conversation was amazing. They had ASL interpreters and discussed the anti-size discrimination bill that just passed in New York City. God, well. brought to you by Dove. Of course it is Dove, you fucking... The event space is pretty big and spaced out. That's lucky. And has these big garage doors that were left open. That's lucky. Meaning there was great ventilation. That's... Lucky and not sweaty. Just had to stop in the street because I realised, see this little belly? See it right here? This little cute little thing. I used to be so scared of it. I used to be so ashamed of it. I used to hate how it like rolled over when I sat down. Like this. Girls, ladies, women, do you have anything better to do with your time? Like no dudes do this shit. None. A reminder that it's normal to gain weight as you grow from a teenage girl to a woman. Okay, maybe you're putting on muscle, maybe you're getting a taller, who knows? It could be anything here. I'm sure it's not just fat. That's a lot of weight. That's, uh, now you're just fat. Like, you're not huge, but that's not just stuff you put on just naturally, alright? That's from eating too much. Doesn't matter about your gender either, like... That's just from eating too much. Ladies and gentlemen, I think we've learnt in today's video that the plus size community really wants you to fucking just look at them and go, wow, I want to be you. And it's a bit culty, isn't it? Just because I'm fat, that doesn't invalidate the things that I say. She died. This went super You wild. ready to get super sized? <laughs> she died too. Today I've got the big fruit loop. <laughs> He's dead. Yep. Join me on my fat positive radio show, which didn't last long because she died. That is Blair White, ladies and gents, and she made that video not too long ago. It went super viral. I made a video about it. And this is showcasing these enormous human beings who have unfortunately, and remember, they are human beings, obviously, uh, unfortunately, they've passed away. Um, but what we need to remember here is their entire lives were dedicated to one thing and that is being super obese like that is a very strange thing to have as your only personality trait the only thing that you're selling to the world is the fact that you are overweight and what we're seeing here people who overeat who don't change anything who want people to accept them for the way that they are we are seeing people doing exactly the same as somebody who gets on the internet and drinks heaps of alcohol every single day is a massive alcoholic and is dying killing their liver all that shit it is exactly the same these people are on the war path to death Hounded by chicken nuggets, ladies and gentlemen. That is what we are seeing here. Is your life better? Are you happier? Is, is everything better now that you're slightly smaller than you were before? Absolutely. And I'm not a little bit smaller. I'm a lot smaller. I can still have kids and that may not have happened if I had stayed the size I was. Like, my question to you is, can you honestly say that you are 100% happy and healthy? Like, um, I think it's... I don't know if you caught that, but Gorlock version 2 or volume 2 is... Hilarious. Well done to whoever made this video. It's really interesting that I feel like I need to justify my existence in this. Shut the fuck up. How about that? How about you shut the fuck up? You need to justify your existence. Anyone who says to you, oh, do I need to justify my existence to you? You need to respond to them with a very simple word. Yes. 
Fucking justify it, motherfucker. I just think that, the, the, that this is a, this how the way the discussion is running is very indicative of the general prevailing attitude towards fatness and the refusal to even accept that potentially there can be other ways of living but as a hell, in a healthy up, body. You're not healthy. You're not fucking healthy, mate. What what are you what are you eating? Like I just want to know, and I'll what? tell you what I eat, and we can. And, work and out. so that's what it comes down to. Like you're, what you're saying well, is you incredibly. Said you do aqua. Of course, it comes down to what you're eating. You stupid fucking weird fringe lady. You've got the exact same fringe as me. That's weird. <laughs> and it's different to have on a big old gal. Hey guys, I wanted to show you all My fashion outfit. sense has divided the internet. Day. The top is from Amazon, so are the cups and the fishnets. This clutch is from Shein. This shirt is from Shein. Amazon and pneumonias. I think if if the last few years have taught us anything, that the government can have a lot of control over what we do, what we wear, maybe that's a good thing. Okay, because this, whatever this is, this isn't okay. Now, whenever I post one of these videos, people always say, hey, 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 you shouldn't have an opinion on that. Particularly ladies say this a lot. Why do you care what she wears? I don't care about what she does. What I care about is that people are lying to her and to themselves. And if I sit there and don't say anything, then who the fuck am I? I'm not doing anything to help the situation. Where I can help the situation is to say this. This lady is morbidly obese and her dress sense is also morbid. It's terrible. It's awful. Fucking stop it. Demonias. I'm about to catch pneumonia. I'm standing out here so fucking cold. But yeah, I just want to share my little birthday outfit with y'all. Have a good night. Yeah, this is a perfect example. Girl, so hot. We need to see the full fit. Bring it. No. Leave it. You wanna know what's super funny is if I was skinny, y'all be like, oh, that's a sleigh. Yeah. Okay, let me explain what a sleigh is. Greatly impress, apparently. What does sleigh mean? Someone who's done exceptionally well. They've killed it. They slay. Okay. I'm 30. Fucking leave me alone. They would say you slay it because you look really good. There is a very clear idea of what looks good to human beings. And whatever this is, all right, whatever you are, is not it because you are showcasing gluttony. No one respects that. No one looks at that and goes, wow, you've been eating whatever you want for 20 years? That's so great. You look awesome. No, you look terrible. You look awful. You look like a big shit after a big night on the, <laughs> on the beers. That was mean. But because I'm big, you think that my shorts don't like. I wanted to open because it looks cute. Oh. It looks cute? All right. It looks as cute as a pit bull that's got a baby in its mouth. That's how cute it looks. Body dysmorphia and beauty standards really do put a strain on a lot of us women. Okay, okay. There's body dysmorphia. There's beauty standards. All right. And, and you know, body dysmorphia, some people go, oh, I look so fat. And they're not fat. You know, they look fine, they look great. And beauty standards, like, hey, you have to be blonde. You've got to be sick. Sure, they may exist for some people. But love, whatever your name is, Tall glass of Jess, apparently. You are not experiencing body dysmorphia or beauty standards. What you are experiencing is cake. Negative self-talk is not good for you. Holy fucking shit. You look like a bloated Marilyn Monroe after she's been in the ground for a month. It's not good to do for, to yourself. It's not good to display to others. And wouldn't body dysmorphia just not exist if we didn't have these stupid beauty standards? You don't have, there's no beauty standards here that are affecting you. None. You are morbidly obese. We go back to that video from Blair White. This is where this lady's headed. Jess shares her style on social media and has spoken out about the effects of commenting negatively on others' appearances. We comment on everything. We're human beings, we're visual creatures. And when you see something like this, if you don't say what you actually feel, you know, you're lying to yourself and you're lying to the people. And don't get me wrong, obviously, if I saw young Jess walking down the street I wouldn't say anything to her. I wouldn't go, hey, you shouldn't be wearing that or whatever, like wear whatever you want. But people are gonna talk shit about you if you look ridiculous. There's a nice way to dress if you're morbidly obese. Like, you know, they make bed sheets for a reason. But whatever you're doing, Jess, when you're exposing your big gullet, it's just not it, love. And I used to be a big dude, you know, and I wouldn't have dressed like that. I mean, have you no, side note, I'm talking about girls in the gym even here, the, the, the outfits that they wear, and girls when they go out to nightclubs. Have you noticed that they're dressing like dudes dress when dudes dress as women? 
In Australia, when you play football here, you have an event at the end of the year called Mad Monday, where everyone gets real drunk, they turn up at six o'clock in the morning, and everyone drinks all day. But a lot of dudes dress as chicks. Dudes at Mad Monday are dressing like Jess. Jess, you look like a dude at a Mad Monday event. That's what you look like. I'm gonna recreate this amazing Dove Cameron look wow. in my size. So she's gonna recreate the photo. This is gonna be I great. I actually went out and just bought the exact same outfit from Savage X Fenty. Luckily, Savage is plus size friendly, Beautiful. so that was super easy. I did forget to film the pants. I then grabbed a pair of high heels because she was wearing high heels. And this is what it looked like when I was taking pictures. This is the final shot. If you think that looks good, you are doing nothing but lying. All right, and you look down on other people who would say that it doesn't look good, but you know it doesn't. Fuck you, mate. Hey, listen, playing the audio of a semi-trailer, a giant truck getting up a hill with this beautiful woman driving along in what she needs for her disability is not funny. And if you laughed, you're a fucking asshole. You should be ashamed of yourself and fuck you to the moon. What's your biggest turn off in guys? Probably when they don't work out. Go to oh the really? And stuff. Yeah. Okay, so they said, what's your biggest turn off? And, I, and the lady in the green crop top for some reason, she said, uh, if they don't work out, that's a big turn off. I've noticed you're very circular which I find interesting. But what do the other ladies say? Let's go back. Oh, really? And stuff, yeah. White man. You turn off white man, you fucking racist. So what do you guys prefer in a guy? Really rich, really black, at least. Okay, that's a little bit racist. I guess she can say it because she's white, but uh, I just find it's a really weird thing that you can just say that and no one bats an eye at it. Uh, but if you said it about any other color, you'd be fucking dr pulled across the coals. Also, Black dudes watching this, what's your obsession with fat white chicks? It's gotta stop. So what do you guys prefer in a guy? Really rich, really black. At least 6'5". 6'5"? Yeah. Oh. She's 6'5", he's gotta be taller, you know? No? Yeah, just lots of money, really. Yeah. Okay, uh, what are you bringing to the table? I could ask what are you taking off the table, but the answer would be mostly everything. A yacht and stuff? Yeah, yeah. That kind of thing, um... There's no jokes there about sinking yachts, so let's move on. Take me on trips. Pay my rent. Mate, she must be kidding, right? She's got a big smile on face, so she must be fucking around. Who has a harder life? Absolutely women. Why? We bleed for a uh, week a month. Um, we are f***ing... We're sexualized everywhere we... Are you? I... Okay. Very good. Uh, yeah, like cat called. Yeah. yeah. Are you? The parking lot tenant tried to steal me before. What is he, fucking Ronnie Coleman? <laughs> trying to get my boyfriend's attention when he's playing video games. Love, your boyfriend's gonna jump out of a fucking window if you do that. <laughs> Please cut it out. Okay, let's move swiftly onwards. Last one. All right, here is, this isn't a video, but this is uh, from someone who I have seen on Instagram and TikTok. Staying fat in 2024. What a strange hill to die on, particularly when you are the hill. Ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed the video. If you did, check this out. This is Better Man, my new book. Uh, over the past 18 months or so, I've worked on this, and I tell you what, I'm very, very proud of it. It is a manifesto on modern masculinity, what it is to be a man, what it is to be a good person and a better version of yourself. It's not a memoir, it's a man moi. Ladies and gents, I think you will absolutely enjoy it. It's not an autobiography by any means. It does talk about my life and what I've gone through. I've been through a lot of mental health issues in the past. Well, not a lot. I was never fully schizophrenic, but I've had some issues. Uh, but it details how I dealt with those and continue to deal with those whilst doing stand-up and videos and raising a family and, and all of those different types of things. And ladies and gents, I think you will really, really enjoy this. I spent a lot of time on it. I, I really worked hard on it. And it means a great deal to me to now have it in my hands, ready for you guys to see it, uh, read it, and uh, become a part of it. Pre-order the book right now. Let's push our way to number one on the chart. So head to IsaacButterfield.com right now and grab yourself a copy of Better Man. Thank you.